All right, so before we jump into C Sharp code, I just want to cover one more topic, squeeze it in here, about solutions and projects. And then I want to talk about how your code is compiled and moved into the Windows Phone 7 emulator whenever we start debugging. So we'll kind of start with projects and move through this chain of thought. A project is just a container for an application. Uh, it contains all of the files that will ultimately be compiled into a uh, deployable format that can then be moved to the emulator or to a real phone. A solution can be made up of multiple projects, but as you're starting out, uh, usually your solutions will only contain one project. So in this case, the project name and the solution name are typically the same. They can be different, but for uh, the purposes of reducing complexity, it's nice to keep them the same. We'll show where you can change it in just a moment. Uh, it might not be evident now, but as you work your way through more advanced applications, like applications that will span multiple computers, it might be a good idea to break up a single application into multiple deployable parts. So that's the purpose of a solution, uh, to contain multiple projects. And, and that's just one scenario. There are other scenarios where it makes sense to have multiple projects in a single solution. For the videos that we're going to create for the solutions that we're going to work on here for the four days uh, that comprise this series of videos, we're only going to use one project per solution. But I wanted to make that, uh, you aware of the purpose of solutions. Uh, so as we get started here, let's create a new project and thereby a new solution. And uh, let's work through a few things here. So I'm going to go File, New Project to pop open the New Project dialog that we've already seen several times. Uh, I'm going to select the Windows Phone application template. And I'm going to change this to Projects and solutions. And notice as I'm typing in the name of the project, the solution name is changing as well. As I said before, we can uh, modify the solution name independent of the project name. Uh, it's probably a good idea for now just to leave that alone. And notice that we'll also put the solution and then the project, which is kind of a subfolder of the solution by default, into a the this user, I happen to be Bob, uh, the documents, Visual Studio, project subdirectory. We could choose to put it someplace else, but again, it's it's usually nice to keep things in their originally intended folder. Uh, it makes it more convenient when working through examples from uh, from videos or, or other examples throughout the web uh, or books to, to follow along. Typically, they're going to use that file structure. Okay, I'm going to click the OK button. And as we've seen before, it creates uh, the template for a, uh, a beginning application. Now, what I want to do before we go any further is I'm going to select Close this solution. First of all, if you just choose close, it'll only close out the current item in the main area. But to close the entire solution down, we choose the File Close Solution menu option. And when we do that, notice that the, the Solution Explorer goes empty, the main area is empty, there's nothing in the toolbox. And so we can now shut down the application. We don't have to necessarily do it that way. Uh, but what I want to do now is open up Windows Explorer. And um, what I want to do is navigate through to where your projects are stored whenever you create them. So they're going to be stored in the Documents directory in Windows 7. In a previous version of Windows, it might be in your My Documents directory. So we're going to go and click into Documents, and then down to Visual Studio 2010, and then down to uh, Projects. And now you can see there are two applications, the Hello World application that we were working on in many of the videos so far. And then also this new uh, project that we just created a moment ago, Projects and Solutions. If I were to double click inside of that, you can see, first of all, a solution file. And you're going to say to yourself, well, how do I know that it's a solution file other than looking at the type? Well, there's also a file extension, SLN. Tell you what. It's probably a good idea since you're going to start developing software to start exposing more of your uh, of Windows so that you can see more information about the file names and so forth. To do that, I'm going to go to the um, Organize menu and choose Folder and Search Options. And then I'm going to go to the View tab of the Folder Options dialog. 
and I'm going to select show hidden files folders and drives and then I'm also going to show to I'm going to deselect hide extensions for known file types and click apply and then I'm going to click OK and when I do that you can see first of all that uh, I can see now the file extensions which is great I can also see hidden files like this SUO file uh, it is as you can see as I'm hovering over a solution user options file it's a binary file that keeps track of uh, options that I've selected specific to this this solution or this project something we don't need to really modify or change it's taken care of inside of Visual Studio whenever we make changes inside of that within this given solution so now I'm gonna drill down into another folder by the same name project and solutions This is gonna contain the project files themselves first of all you'll see that there's a projects and solutions dot CSPROJ that's the the project file if I were to right click and open it up let's see if I can open it using notepad let's browse and I'm gonna to go to um, the uh, well let's go Windows system 32 and I'm going to scroll down until I find notepad and click open and then I'm going to click deselect use this to open this kind of file but inside of this file is simply just a bunch of XML that sets properties and then also includes references to uh, various parts of the class library and then it also includes uh, references to the individual files that comprise this project okay so that's all it is just a pointer to uh, properties of the project and files that belong to the project as simple as that but don't don't edit it. <laughs> you might uh, corrupt something and then you might have to start all over from scratch and that wouldn't be very good. But you can see within this folder there's a number of resources that we should already be familiar with. For example, the mainpage.xaml and here's the mainpage.xaml.cs file that we've been working in. There's a number of PNG files. Uh, if you just select it and look in its preview, these are the files that we see here in our emulator that represent uh, an icon for our application. Uh, here's a splash screen image. It's what will display as our application is loading into the phone if there's any lag time or if it requires a long time to load that uh, that file, that application into uh, into the phone's memory. And so there's some other things as well as we look through here. If we were to go to the properties folder, here's that WM app manifest at XML file. Great. One last part I want to show you before we move on is this bin directory. There's going to be nothing, uh, we're going to go to bin, debug, and then there's nothing inside of there. We're going to come right back to that in just a moment. Okay, so let's actually navigate our way back and uh, there's a couple of different ways to open up the project solution that you were working on. You can just double click the SLN file here uh, in Windows Explorer and it'll open it up in Visual Studio. Another way to open up a project is to choose an open project that would allow us to navigate to a given project. And then also when we were on the start page, we were able to get to that open dialog directly from there. I believe it was the option underneath uh, new project. You can open an existing project. And uh, one other way too is to look for recent projects that you've been working with in this list of recent projects uh, from the file menu, okay? Now let's do this. I'm just going to run the application. I know we haven't done any real work in this so far, but we're just going to run the application by start debugging. We can see it loading up and I'm going to go ahead and just immediately stop it. And now I'm going to go back to Windows Explorer and I'm going to drill back down into this bin directory, debug directory, and now notice that we have files here. So what's happened is uh, once we determined that we wanted to start debugging our application, uh, there was a compilation step that took our source code and turned it into a DLL file. And that DLL file is a .NET assembly. It's a special type of DLL file that only runs within the context of the .NET runtime or the common language runtime, the CLR that we spoke about several lessons ago. Um, but also, there's uh, several other files like the application icon, there's that app manifest.xaml file. Uh, 
Then here's a PDB file and its purpose is to keep uh, the code that's executing in the emulator in sync with the code that's executing within Visual Studio so that we can be stepping through lines of code. So that's the purpose of that file. But the most important for our purposes is this XAP file. And um, it's also referred to as a ZAP file. It contains the information that will ultimately be loaded into your phone. So this is a Silverlight application with the XAP file extension. And this file and this file alone is loaded into the emulator and ultimately to the Windows Phone itself when we go to deploy it to a real physical device. So what is this type of file? I want to show you that there's nothing magical to it whatsoever. So watch what I do. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select rename. And I'm going to rename this from zap to zip. Okay, are you familiar with a zip file? It's basically just a compressed file. It can contain multiple files that are all kind of uh, included into one file. And it asks me when I choose to rename it, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Now I'm going to double click. And inside of the zap file that we renamed to a zip file, there are many of the same files that we saw previously in the bin debug folder, such as the image files, the dll.net assembly file, the app manifest.xaml. It also includes the wm app manifest.xml file, as we learned earlier. It contains information that our application needs to start up such as the first XAML page to display. It also contains references to which images should be used by the phone uh, for the background and things of that nature. It also contains information such as the image file to be used for the large and the small icons for the phone start menu. So this is a very simple video. The main takeaway here is that there that nothing is hidden and nothing is mysterious, okay? Uh, we can navigate through the files that are generated by Visual Studio and then later by the compiler and get clues about what happens as we create a new project and when we compile and debug our application. Uh, this information will serve us well as we build applications to help us make smarter choices uh, and in some cases to help us overcome problems or errors in other cases. So the other key idea for this lesson is the organization of both solutions and projects. For simple applications, we're typically going to have a single project contained within a single solution. In larger applications, we might have multiple projects that are all managed into a single solution. And it's as simple as that. Okay, so now we're ready to start talking more about C Sharp. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.